All right, here we go with round two of how to solve a physics problem. And this is where I go into the, you know, at least a couple examples for your first worksheet uh, in physics. So here we go. So here's the example, okay? Find the average speed in meters per second of a baseball that travels 30 meters in one second. Okay, there's the problem. Now, what do we do first? Before we even read it, we take a breath. That is the obvious thing to do. Take a deep breath and then read the problem. Okay, don't forget to do it multiple times. So, take a deep breath. Okay, so I should find the average speed in meters per second of a baseball that travels 30 meters in one second. This is a pretty easy one, but it's good for an example. Okay. All right, so if we go back to our problem solving strategy, we did the obvious things. We breathed and then we read. Now we need to do some of the work, which is the guess work. Guess work. It's not actually guessing, okay, but it is guess work. Okay, so the first part is the givens. So we underline the givens. Here's what we do, okay? So find the average speed of a baseball that travels up. 30 meters, that is a piece of information. It's traveling 30 meters. And it's doing that in one second. Those are our givens. Now we also have to list them. And the way we do that is nice and simple in physics, okay? 30 meters is a distance. So we write D equals 30 M. So the distance is 30 meters. Okay, so there, oh, we forgot the one, the other given. So distance is 30 meters, time is one second. Okay, so there we go. We have our givens written down. Okay, that's the information that was given to us. Next step, the unknown. We need to circle it. What are we trying to find here? Hmm, well, it tells me right here, find the average speed. So we can circle the average speed. And the way I like to make a note of it is I like to say S, which is for speed, or really it should be S bar, but S equals question mark. I don't know. That's what I'm looking for. Okay? All right. So then we got to move on to the equations. We know what we have and we know what we're looking for. So what equation are we going to use? Okay? Here is where our essential equation sheet comes in. Keep in mind that we know D, we know T, and we're looking for S. So in this case, when we look at our essential equation sheet, okay, we notice, I'll take that stuff out, that there are three equations. And remember, we knew the distance, whoops, we knew the distance, we knew the time, and we were looking for speed. So what we need is an equation where speed is on one side of the equation bar and then D and T are on the other side. It could be like that. It could be like that. It could be that. I don't know, but we just have to know that D and T are on one side and S is on the other. Okay. Now, which one of these equations shows us the relationship between speed and distance and time? Well, it's this one, S equals D over T. So here's what we do. We will actually copy that and paste it into our equation. So the way it looks up here, let's redo this. Just to remind ourselves, we take a deep breath. We read, find the average speed in meters per second of a baseball that travels 30 meters in one second. This, these are our givens. We know that distance equals 30 meters. And we know that time equals one second. And we're trying to find the average speed. So we circle that and we say S equals question mark. Okay. And we just said that we found the right equation. So we write the equation down. Speed equals distance over time. All right. That's the equation we're going to use. Next up, we got the equation. Now we have to substitute and solve. So in this case, we're looking for S, so we can just write S equals. And then we're looking for D. What is D? Oh, look at it, it's right there. 
So 30 meters, we just plug that in right on top. The relationship, the equation tells us to divide. So we're going to divide. We divide that by the time. And what's the time? Well, boom, one second. So we write down one second. Okay. Now we just need to simplify that and solve for it. Remember we do the units, okay, separately from the numbers. So what's 30 divided by one? Duh, that's 30. And what's meters divided by seconds? Well, that's just meters divided by seconds or otherwise known as meters per second. So we solved the problem, but there's two steps left just to be sure. The next step is to self check. Okay, 30 meters per second. Does that make sense if the question asked about a baseball that travels 30 meters in one second? Um, yes, that makes sense. It's not super high, it's not super low. It makes sense here. And so I'm sure of the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box the answer and hand it into Mr. Webb and say, my answer is that the speed is 30 meters per second. Okay. All right. Let's try another one, okay? This one's a little different. First, we take a deep breath. We can do this. Then we read the problem. Find the distance traveled in meters if a car travels at a speed of 20 meters per second for 10 seconds. So think 20 meters. That's a little longer than the length of my room every second. So think one 1,000. It covers that distance and it does that for 10 seconds okay so it's traveling that speed for 10 seconds let's think about how far that might be just in our heads so it's probably a little longer than 10 times the length of my room so just keep that in mind and here's where we go from here okay we go ahead and we underline the givens we know that it's going at 20 meters per second and it's doing that for 10 seconds so we have to label these of course we know that our speed is 20 meters per second and 10 seconds. What's that? That's a time. So our time is 10 seconds. Okay. What are we looking for? Do we got to go to the unknown now? Well, we're asking to find the distance traveled. So we circle that. So what we're looking for is distance. So distance equals what? I don't know. We're about to find out. Okay. There it's a dot. Okay. Now, I would go over to the central equation sheet and I would see a bunch of equations. And I would look for an equation that has D on one side of the equation and S and T somewhere on the other. That should be a... Uh, there's a T. There should be D on one side and S and T on the other. It doesn't matter if one's up or down or whatever. Okay? Anyway. So the idea here, though, is that D is on one side. And I'll give you the answer. Okay, on your central equation sheet, there should be an equation that is S, or sorry, D equals S times T. In other words, the distance that something travels equals the speed that it's traveling times the time that it travels for that. Okay, so we have the right equation. Now we're going to substitute D equals S. Okay, what is S? 20 meters per second. Okay, so we're going to write in 20 meters per second. And times, we use parentheses here in, math, in uh, physics class. T, what's T? 10 seconds, so we write 10 seconds. Okay. All right, so let's do the units and the numbers separately. Okay. So distance equals, well, what's 20 times 10? Well, just add a zero, so it's 200. And then here's something a little funky. Let's do this over here on the side. Meters divided by seconds times, there's dot, seconds. What does that wind up being when you multiply them together? Well, seconds is the same as seconds over one, just like 10 over one is the same as 10. And then when you multiply these across, you get m times, there's a dot, times s over s. And we know that that's like 10 times five divided by five, so we just cross out the s and we just get m, and so it is m. So you can either check by the math of the units, or you can just think distance, what's distance measured in? Well, we're gonna use meters, 
there and there's meters in the speed so I'm going to use the same distance units that are in the speed so it's going to be d equals 200 meters you self-check you say okay 200 meters is that a little bit longer than 10 times my room yeah I think so so you box the answer submit it to Mr. Webb get your grade get your uh, maximum number of points okay let's try one more on this uh, sheet that you're going to do and the last one is this, okay? Breathe. I can do this. Find the time in seconds that it takes to travel 60 miles when traveling at 60 miles per hour. It's a little different here, okay? But here's what we do. So the givens, what we know is that we're traveling 60 miles at 60 miles an hour. So what is 60 miles? That is our distance. And miles is abbreviated MI because M is for meters. We also know that we're traveling at 60 miles per hour. What is that? That's a speed. So speed equals 60. And we need to change this to miles divided by hours. That's all that P stands for. Really, it should be M MI slash H, HR. But don't worry about it. This is what we got. Now, what are we looking for? What's the unknown? We're looking for the time. So the time equals question mark. Okay. Now, if we look at our central equation sheet, might be a little inked up. Well, if we look, we see that there is an equation that has D and S on one side and T on the other, and that is this one right here. Okay. So we're going to put that one in here. So we're going to say that t equals d over s. In other words, if you take the distance that you travel, divide it by the speed that you travel at, you're going to get the time that it takes to do it. So here we go. Let's substitute. What's d? 60 miles. All right, so 60 miles. And the equation tells us to divide here. So that's divided by s, which is 60 miles per hour. Okay, let's do everything separately. What's 60 divided by 60? You got it, that's one, so t equals one. And then what's miles divided by miles? Oh well, wait, the miles cancel out, and all you're left with is one over one over hour, which, if you think, that's one over one over hours. That's the same as saying one of one fourth, that would just be four, so you get one hour is your time. However, it did say to convert to seconds. So the shortcut way here is to do one hour. If you then divide that by 60, I'm sorry, <laughs> multiply that by 60 minutes, okay, you're going to get that there's, well, 60 minutes, multiply that by 60 again, and you get that there's 3,600 seconds. That makes sense. It'll take about an hour to go 60 miles if you're traveling 60 miles an hour. And there's your answer. Turn it in. Get your points. Remember, I'm looking for work. I am looking for the correct number and I'm looking for the correct unit. Be sure you do that. Okay. See you in class.